uh, government officials, friends, family, extended family, and for some of us connected, even our family came just because they understand the impact Rick had. And, and they understand, um, you know, how, how reaching that was. So it's, um, it's a large group here, and we're very happy for that. This is a significant investment and, and contribution to the community. Um, a few points of business first, and then we'll get on with the program. Uh, first, feel free. There's food, as you know, and drinks. Feel free to keep mingling and getting that during the program. Um, it's, it's fluid and relaxed. Uh, the restrooms are around the corner behind this generator over here. Um, for much <laughs> If you hear it, come on, run. Um, um, uh, for those interested in seeing inside the building, that time will come. We, uh, at the end, we will offer tours. Um, we have to keep it to smaller groups, so we will open the doors, let you come in, and take you through the data center floor if you're interested. Um, it's a geek's paradise, let me tell you. Um, but, but you are welcome to come in. And again, we just may need to ask if you come in, if there are a lot of people, just to hold off for a few minutes. Um, the program, it, this consists of a few speakers and, and um, items to present. Uh, and then follow, please, that everything will stay open until around 5.30 in this parking lot. Um, a few notes that people want to point out. While Senator Mark Warner was unable, unable to attend, Drew Densmore is here, outreach representative from the Roanoke office. And Drew is also here for our groundbreaking. Um, so we really appreciate the, uh, yes, yeah, this was a forest, shovels in the dirt out front. And we really appreciate the support um, from, from Senator Warner's office. Uh, also, uh, Bob Goodlett, Representative Bob Goodlett, uh, was unable to attend this evening. And, and additionally, Washington Lee University President Ken Ruscio, um, he's traveling, and I double booked him. So I want to take that credit right now. Um, I just I want it out there. Um, but I, I double booked him. He's traveling. He, he sincerely regrets not being here. Um, I'm very happy Kim is, is here or coming, um, his wife Kim. And, uh, and they both had a fond appreciation for Rick and his efforts. Um, we have a few speakers, um, some brief. Uh, I, I can't claim that I will be because I do have a moment. Um, but I'd like to start with Hunt Regal. Hunt Regal is the chair of the Rockbridge Area Network Authority and former member of the Rockbridge Board of Supervisors. Hunt? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. To many folks, a map of rural lands depicts some widely scattered dots and lines. They say the dots are far apart and make our rural setting hard to keep informed. To those who live here, dots are really homes, and li lines are roads to get from place to place. Real people with real hopes to be in touch with neighbors and their families near and far. Our safety volunteers protect our health, and businesses can now protect their wealth. The RANA network can connect these dots, and each of them will link to still more spots. Our anchor institutions touch us all. They'll serve us better still when fiber's lit. Successful economics is our wish, preserving rural nature when we may. A major force was needed at the start to point us to a way to work as one. Rick Peterson was there to guide the way to maximize investments for us all. His vision led three governments to join the university for building fiber. Their work will, their will to work together led to this. The center that we dedicate today will be the hub of RANA's network links. The notion that Washington and Lee could leverage its interest in constructing a data center into a major hub for communications in the region was due in large part to Rick's efforts. This data center now stands as a workhorse for the 21st century and as a token of trust in the relationship between the University, Lexington, Buena Vista, and the County of Rockbridge. Thank you. Steve McAllister is here to represent Washington and Lee University and serves as the Vice President of Finance and Treasurer. Thank you. Uh, David uh, asked if I could represent the university today since Ken wasn't going to be here. And uh, you know that, that's big shoes to fill, uh, shoes that I'm completely 
incapable of filling. And I said that to David. And he said, well, why don't you spend about an hour and a half talking about the economics of broadband <laughs> in a uh, rural community? So, uh, uh, you know, if you'll be patient with me for a few minutes. No, I am happy to, to have you all here uh, at Washington and Lee at uh, this site, uh, the Rick, Rick, Richard A. Peterson Data Center. Uh, and uh, express our appreciation for the opportunity it holds for the broader Rockbridge, Lexington, and Buena Vista communities. Uh, there are a number of individuals that I would like to express the university's appreciation to before making some remarks about the role of Rick for which this building is named. Uh, first, I would like to express appreciation to the RAN board who have worked diligently, tirelessly, tirelessly, tirelessly without compensation and at times under the overly critical eyes of the community. The work of a volunteer board, and the Reina board is a volunteer board, often goes without thanks or a recognition of the sacrifices that those individuals make to serve the community. Uh, those individuals, Hunt Regal, Chair, David Sackey, Vice Chair, Mimi Elrod, Mel Henson, and Greg Amanat have served us well. The fact that we are here today and able to dedicate this facility and celebrate the progress that has been made toward a wired community is in large part due to the work of these individuals over the past uh, last two plus years. Please join me in a round of applause as a small token of thanks. For that. In addition, they have been supported much of this time by an advisory group that has brought creative thought problem-solving skills and technical expertise to the task. While there are many who have been active with the advisory committee, there are four in particular who have been engaged and active with each step along the way. They are Brian Brown, Alec Wilder, John Nuremberg, and Dusan Yanya. Please join me in saying thank you to these four and others. For their I also want to recognize the three jurisdictions who came together to see this project through. The City of Buena Vista and its City Council and Director of Economic Development, Brian Brown. The County of Rockbridge Board of Supervisors with Spencer Souter, Sam Krickenberger, and Dan Grimm providing support to them. And the City Council of Lexington and City Manager, John Ellistead. Without the spirit of cooperation and recognition that this project has positive implications beyond any single jurisdiction, we, we would not be here today. Thank you. <laughs> Finally, I want to speak about the person whom we all wish was here today, but are blessed by his spirit and his tangible work to make this a reality. Rick Peterson came to me several years ago and laid out a concept for how WNL could assist in an endeavor that would both meet the needs of the university, but also provide a greater good to the area community. Rick, in many ways, was a visionary of what could be. And I was fortunate that I had seen this and become aware of his ability through a working relationship that had begun at Randolph Macon Women's College and then later here at Washington Lee. Rick had succeeded to be an outstanding ITS director because he took the time to understand ITS from a user's perspective. He was a humanist who had an extraordinary gift for understanding the technical. A rarity for the people of the breed of people that I typically call computer jockeys. Uh, Rick may have learned many of these skills from his education. He had a computer science engineering degree from Northwestern and he later supplemented this with a master's degree in organizational development and transformation from the California Institute of Integral Studies. And I have to say, if you ever go to look at what the California Institute of Integral Studies is, uh, you come away realizing he was on a completely different playing field from the rest of us. Uh, when I was at Randolph-Macon, Rick did the unthinkable in the early 90s. He took the position of adopting a best-in-breed software long before other institutions would consider the possibility of something other than full enterprise software systems. His rationale at the time was the software that specializes in a certain area would always be better than the generic approach taken in an enterprise system. As I understand it, when the concept came up and the vice president to whom he reported attempted to dismiss the idea, Rick said, let me do it. It is on me to make it work. And he did. And that was sort of how Rick went about uh, his business. 
Uh, this mantra came through in the message uh, they brought to me when he proposed the idea of exploring a separate entity data center and the use of it as the heart of a broadband network for the community. My initial thought was, you want to spend WNL's money so that we can have someone else manage it and control it. His response was, let me see if we can establish a set of partners, and if I can, then it is on me to make it work. As all who worked with Rick know, his enthusiasm and excitement was hard to say no to. So he began to build a co coalition of interested parties and saw the possibilities when we became aware of the BTOP grant as a funding mechanism. He brought me back in and said, you know, I think we can make this happen. And then sort of nonchalantly, he said, I assume it's okay for WNL to put $2 million toward this project. <laughs> it was typical Rick. He had already figured it out. And he knew that we were going to say yes. And we did. He laid out the vision. And as always, it was hard to say no to Rick. Uh, from that, many individuals provided input and support to complete the BTOP application, only for the area to be notified that the application was turned down in the first round. After the group uh, took the news and regrouped and considered the options, it was decided that another shot would be taken for a second round BTOP grant. Once again, Rick came to me and said, I think we can make this happen. I was becoming very skeptical myself. And then I said, well, it's your time that you're going to spend on this. You decide if you really want to push hard. And then he said, oh, and by the way, can we go up to two and a half million dollars as our contribution? <laughs> Once again, Rick was a hard person to say no to. Fortunately, the second time proved to be the charm. And I'm grateful because otherwise I think we may be on the hook for about five million dollars for this uh, instead of the two and a half. Of all in the community who worked on the grant applications and planning for the possibility of this development, Rick was never done. He always saw the benefit to the community, and he would always avoid allowing the group to get bogged down in the details. He knew that the details would kill the project. As long as we could see the dream, we didn't have to worry about the details. Now, the Rainer Board might argue now, I wish he had thought about the details, but, but he was smart that he, he realized we would never come together if the details were, were part of the picture. Uh, whether it was Rick's ability to connect with people, his understanding of how to work within an organization, his understanding of how to sell transformation, or his ability to make each one of us feel part of a bigger picture, Rick was a hard person to say no to. And fortunately, as a community, we never did. So today we get to honor Rick's memory and celebrate the success of the community by recognizing that we all got to say, okay, Rick, I'll go along. Steve has found a way to say no to me, by the way. <laughs> Good, good to know that. <laughs> Thank you. And Steve, I'm, I'm happy to tell you Steve has easily trimmed five minutes off of my uh, speech. And um, I, I did want to say a few words from ITS's perspective and, and mine as well, um, personally. Um, I, I echo the thank yous that, that Steve put out there. The County Board of Supervisors um, and the County General has inherited, they inherited a lot, as did the cities but many have taken an active role to make this project go forward. Um, you mentioned Spencer Suter, Dan Grimm, Vicki Huffman, the county attorney, and Steve Bolster, financial services uh, in addition. Um, I also want to, I do want to thank WNL, the Board of Trustees, President Ruscio, and Steve, uh, for the support and commitment to Rick and his justification that it was time for WNL to invest in technology in a new data center. Uh, Steve, you know, Steve and Rick were the drivers for WNL uh, support and knew it was the right thing to do. Uh, I must admit, I have challenged Steve on that decision many times <laughs> throughout the process and, and have easily thrown up a couple of whys to Rick uh, because um, you know how projects go of this caliber and this size. But they were right. It was the right thing to do, and many will benefit from this decision for years to come. Um, I also want to thank WNL General Counsel Ann Shank. She's, she lived through a lot of details and, and agreements. Um, I know she's in here somewhere as well. Um, within ITS, a few more thank yous. Um, I, many thanks to everybody in ITS, not just for their involvement in this endeavor, but for the daily management of chaos. It's just um, it's part of what they do, and they do it well. Um, it's an incredible group to be associated with. Jeff McCreary 
Tom Tinsley, Dean Tallman, and many others for the oversight of the data center construction, the um, uh, migration of ITS systems that we, we came in here and we've been using this center since last November, um, as well as um, uh, security and other things and, and their ownership of it to, re to keep it as a state-of-the-art facility. Not just start there and let it diminish, but to keep it there. Um, finally, a, a quick thank you, not too quick, to Lisa Dunlap standing in the back here. Um, Lisa, not only a huge supporter of Rick's, but um, somebody I rely on daily. She is the manager of ITS budgets, so she's a good person to rely on. Um, but she keeps me honest, but she is also someone who made this event possible. I mean, she owned every one of her tasks and most of mine, so she is fantastic. Um, so a couple things about the facility briefly. Um, one, when we named this building, two issues uh, arose about the naming. First, we requested the building be named in honor of Rick, and Greg Amonette from the board quickly dubbed it the Richard A. Peterson Center for the Performing Fiber. Um, <laughs> that, that did not stick. It did not stick, but it has a ring to it that we'll use somewhere. Um, the second, and I've already made this mistake, and I was pointed out again today from a, an advisory member, Alec Wilder, um, that, that uh, he's quick to point out that the inclusion, we, we asked for it to be the Richard A. Peterson Data Center, and he in indicated that the inclusion of data actually limited the function of this building. Um, it, 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 it limited it, and we should simply to refer to it as a center. It was more meaningful and truly represents the impact, uh, the function and impact it will have. It has, it is, he has had to remind us of this often. Um, this, this center is the central nervous system. It, it serves as much more than a data center. It is a central nervous system to, to the total project. Um, the impact for the region, this building is a hub with miles of fiber spokes throughout the cities and to the far extremes of the county. Um, it, it's, going to, it's going to have huge potential in the future technological uh, services to be delivered to businesses and residents. Um, for, for the economic development, the ability to move to this region, have access to a state-of-the-art facility, and operate on a first-class network is not something you find in many places, particularly in the rural world. So it, it is a true benefit. The impact for WNL, and this first one really for all, but I can tell you already for WNL, broadband competition. We are in a rural area, it's a world of incumbents, and you pay high dollar. Um, our peers pay low dollar, and, and um, it's amazing what they pay for what we pay uh, in, in equivalent. So broadband competition, the impact and the cost, we just renegotiated a contract. Before we light up a single customer on Reina, our new contract is significantly better, and it's because they know we're coming. So it's fantastic, and, and, and it's also how they're doing business. It's, you know, but it's a combination. These things are coming together um, at, the same, at the right time. Um, ITS, we're util utilizing this facility as a primary data center. We already have it running. It's been running since November. It's a node on a state-of-the-art fiber ring with another data center on the far side. Um, it's a fantastic data center, um, but it, it, it allows us for growth, and I don't mean just growth in floor space and rack space and all the geek stuff. The university is moving in a technology direction, and it needs the ability for, for us to support that. Um, we have some incredible projects going on, and this infrastructure, we are positioned well for that growth. Um, and this data center, I'm confident, is part of that. Um, I recently met with a representative from Hewlett Packard, and their comment uh, just out of the blue was, your university is on the front end of some very interesting and innovative projects. I firmly believe we would not be without this kind of infrastructure. So it's, it's an incredible investment. And again, I thank uh, the Board of Trustees and others who supported it. Um, now I want to talk about Rick. And, and you know, in preparing a few words, and let me give the caveat. Again, Steve saved you five minutes, but when I say a few words, anybody from ITS knows <laughs> this, this may last. Um, <laughs> but um, I found my thoughts and memories coming randomly, and they're all over the map, professionally and personally. Um, some had me smiling, others laughing, and, and some just sad. Um, you know, at some point, managing these thoughts, I heard Rick's familiar voice and words, and just relax, enjoy yourself, go, go have fun, don't worry about it, you'll be fine. I mean, you could just, I could hear it, it just was beating at me, so I said, all right, I'm gonna relax. Um, some late nights in the office, I still find those words eking in. Um, a few things about what Rick, who Rick was and what he meant to us. Um, in 2007, within months of his uh, announcement, of the university's announcement of him becoming the CTO, he offered me a position. Um, I knew the day we met that he was somebody I wanted to partner with. Uh, he, he had big ideas, lots of energy, coupled with a simple calm, intelligence, and compassion. Excuse me. I remember com commenting to my wife after the battery of interviews, and I, and I mean battery, uh, the interviews uh, forced on me. It was an academic process that I was not familiar with. It worked well, but I was not familiar with it. Um, 
But I, after that, I, I told her, he's somebody I just wanted to work around, learn from, and grow with. Um, coming from an increasingly ruthless corporate environment from where I came, uh, I saw the stars align with Rick's presence and, and w &L's environment. Those two, I saw a future that I was very excited about and still am. Uh, in my career, I've had the luxury of two standout mentors who helped shape my future. Des despite only three and a half years with Rick, uh, he was one of those two. He was a true, true mentor uh, in that he listened, he, listened he, he guided, he had expectations. Um, he supported professionally and personally, and is likely the key reason I was afforded the opportunity to succeed him. Uh, thank you, Ken Ruscio and Provost Samarita Junaprilli, uh, for that. While he faced hard realities, he never stopped supporting, uh, caring, and advocating for my future, for ITS's future, for WNL. So he's a phenomenal person. His approach, he was wide open to any and all people, ideas, concepts. If you threw something at him, his first thing would be, why not? I mean, he was wide open. He had the perfect balance of a visionary with appreciation for the now, uh, an understanding of the reality to deliver versus simply talking about it. Um, anybody who's worked for a visionary, getting them to today is difficult. Rick had both. Rick had both. Um, his presence on campus was well known. He, he made the effort to make the rounds, meet people. He talked work, philosophy, sports, anything. Uh, if you started it, he was going to keep going. Uh, it's a cliche but true. He was larger than life, figuratively and physically. Um, I, I found last night or uh, yesterday on my desk, and I, I was looking at thinking, what is this? And I realized it was a Chinese fortune that was actually his. I've, I've kept several things. And um, it was on his desk. And the fortune was uh, from the fortune cookie. It was the closest distance between two people is a good laugh. That, that summed it up. That's exactly how he operated. Uh, he actively solicited input at all times. Within ITS, he, he constantly solicited input on strategic issues, technology, direction. Um, he simply wanted to hear from people, understand their perspective, and, ex and expose, um, understand their, their perspective or expose them to something that they previously may not have considered. Uh, students, uh, ironically, you know, we, we have a great student body, and, and they're not vocal to us. They, you know, if, if, if we, when we fail, we fail big. Everybody knows it. Um, students, lots of times, do not speak up, and there was one year in particular that, um, I, I mean, Rick had a problem that he wanted to hear from students. And um, there were, one year, our local student paper was Ring Tung Fai had an article, and there's an editorial from a student complaining about services. And particularly, one in particular, I don't know if it was wireless, but some service. My initial reaction was defensiveness, concern, and thinking, oh, man, what's the provost going to say? <laughs> Rick walks in with a huge smile holding the paper, exclaiming, look, they're talking to us. This is great. <laughs> He was so happy. He had no worries. He, he was getting what he wanted. He wanted feedback. Um, his accomplishments in the years with WNL were many and large scale. The building and the reason we're here. Shared information desk at the library uh, between librarians and ITS, impacting the an impact on the library renovation. His leadership in the text and coding initiative, a digital humanities initiative that allowed him to work with a longtime friend uh, from college who is now a professor on the West Coast. Rick was actively coding XML for this, and, and, and it published. Um, I think in the fall of 2010. Um, you know, overhaul of our course systems. In our first year, we touched everything. You name it. If there was software, we either replaced it, upgraded it, migrated it. I, I see some tears from users on campus because it was painful. But uh, we touched it all. But those were big and they needed to be done. Um, so we did, he did projects large and he celebrated large. At, at the celebration that ended a major network directory service and email replacement, uh, he, he, um, there was a celebration and Rick rapped to the tune, Big Bad John. That was his delivery. Um, rap, by the way, is not just his initials for the center, but it's his rapping capabilities. That he, um, he was invested in anything he touched, from technology to refinishing a go-game board to his approach towards fighting cancer, which included the best of Western medicine balanced with the best of Eastern philosophy. Uh, Eastern philosophy was an area that was always a research, and it just was natural for him to lean on that. Um, as many of us have discussed, never have we witnessed such a positive attitude and approach through such a trying time and issue. Um, another example of this approach, I, I do want to tell you, one late evening I was just very frustrated. I came in his office, you know, and I, I, I was there to, to talk but complain. And, um, and, you know, Rick sat there and he listened, and then he just sat there and he shook his head, long pause, and he said, you know what you need to do? And I was just excited. I thought, great, here's the wisdom. It's going to happen. <laughs> Longer pause. You, you need to... Um, you need to go home, hug your wife, relax, take it easy. <laughs> that was it. All right, I still got that problem, but that's a great idea. <laughs> I 
I think my wife just said she doesn't remember that night. Um, yeah. Um, I, yeah, so th that, was, that was his approach, that was his attitude. His presence, attitude, and approach is missed it's miss as much today as it was two years ago, over two years ago. Um, in the last few months in the office, he would bring flowers and leave them around with vases and a simple sign, I have the sign, some new fresh flowers, bring some just if you want to, see them, maybe smile. That was it. Um, just a little card. Um, in his memory, ITS has built a, a, a garden that you pass on your way up. It's, it's Rick's garden. The evolution began last fall and has continued through the spring. Our goal, once it's established, is that people can visit. Um, a team member is great at woodwork. They'll put a bench in. People can visit. They can come and sit and reflect. Hopefully not watch deer eat the flower petals, <laughs> but just enjoy the space. And, and really, um, the other would be, as it evolves and it fills in, is that people can come cut flowers, take them in offices. Somebody's having our day, take some flowers in, you know, so people can see them and, and maybe smile. Uh, I want to thank that flower, I'm going to call it a non-committee, um, uh, Julie Knutson, Lisa Dunlap, Jeff Knutson, Ruth Floyd, Mark Keeley, Mary Peterson, and, and Rick's sister, Chris Lash, um, who donated money to help support it. A lot of people put in effort. Um, others, I know, are planning on it. People who knew Rick, people who did not know Rick. It doesn't matter. They understand it and they contribute. Um, I do want to read something. Chris... Chris Flash is Rick's sister in Austin, Texas, and she sent me a note this week and asked that I read it in her absence. I'm so sorry I can't be at this data center dedication. A previously planned Colorado fishing trip is keeping me away. To Mary, Cobb, and Charlotte, I'm with you. I would like to offer three toasts. And I don't know if that's a glass, but three toasts. First to my brother Rick, who envisioned and began this data collaboration between Washington and Lee University, the county and the cities of Lexington and Buena Vista. Rick's endless energy and moreover his relentlessness really bugged me at times, especially at 7 a.m. But those traits enabled him to accomplish big things. Let's also toast those who completed what Rick began, David Sackey and many others from the WNL County, from WNL County and city officials. And third, a toast to those who knew Rick well enough to know he would want to soften a building with a beautiful garden. Here, here, here. I know that scotch tastes good, Chris Lash. Um, Mary Pete. Mary Peterson, Rick's wife, has a few words that she'd like to say. Okay, hi everybody. Is that okay? Um, I just want to thank everybody for coming out. Um, it's a wonderful honor and tribute to Rick. His work representing Washington and Lee on this project, and more so as a tribute to his larger, excuse me, larger than life spirit and ability to bring people together. Um, I just wanted to share a memory that I have of talking with Rick and sitting in the car, um, the two of us discussing, you know, this the whole grant process to get the the rain of all rolling and. He knew it would be a big effort, um, and you know the pros and the cons. Because it would be a big, big effort. Um, he um, had already been probably through his first surgery and was undergoing his treatment. Um, but true to, true to his nature, he set aside his personal challenges and recognized that the benefits to the Rockbridge County community would be so much greater. And um, I think David mentioned this earlier, but um, I think Rick always found that a good challenge was fun. So he, <laughs> I think it was probably more challenging for uh, a lot of you that kept the ball rolling. So, um, and then, um, so just, just thank you all so much for coming out. The, um, the garden that David mentioned um, is uh, really a labor of love. Uh, from the ITS staff, um, the the ground's really hard, <laughs> filled with a lot of rocks. So there's been a lot of, I'm sure maybe some uh, swearing under your breath as you're <laughs> using the, the pick pickaxes. Um, but it's really it's a, it's going to be a lovely spot. Um, and then the the sign that we designed, I wanted to just mention the the font that we picked. Is, um, it's a uh, it's Art Deco, 
And for, for anybody who knows the movie Ghostbusters, there's a, a line in it where the, um, the characters have run up a, you know, the big skyscraper and one of the characters comes out and very calmly looks around and says, Art Deco, very nice. <laughs> and, and Rick always liked that. <laughs> and then over on the table, there's a, um, there's a photograph with the mat. And sorry, my, my voice. Is, I'll get through it. Um, so please sign the mat. Special notes. What, no, whatever comes to my mind would be great. Um, and then also we do... Um, Rick's family enjoyed scotch, so there's some bottles of scotch at the bar. <laughs> Feel free to, you know, have have a little, have a lot, um, sprinkle it around the building. So a way to christen it, and um, that would Rick would love that. Um, and then just uh, heartfelt thank you to everyone here and folks who couldn't be here who sent really great wishes. Um, we're Family is very grateful for the tribute, and I know Rick would be very moved. other items I just want to point out and then we'll wrap it up. Um, one is the chalkboard over here. The chalkboard was Rick's um, high-tech project tracking process. Um, you know, I mean, for one of the most advanced guys to track his projects on a chalkboard annually, just, uh, but, but, um, so I, I inherited Rick's office and um, that chalkboard was there and I stared at it for over a year and one day I said, I need to move beyond this. And I stood there with an eraser and Jeff Overholzer, Lisa Dunlap, a few others walked in. And I think I just was standing there, and I stood there for a while, and then we all said, no, we need to preserve this. So that chalkboard will be hung on the wall in the data center to, um, one, commemorate the technology of the time. Uh, when Rick stepped out of office, and right in the middle is Raina WNL co-location. It was, it was a top priority. Um, they also, I just have to point on the bottom right is the Covey uh, metric, matrix. Anybody who knows that, you have important, non-important, urgent, non-urgent. Rick lived by this matrix. Um, so what I love to do is say, you want me in box three, right? Which, uh, you need to be in box two, which, you know, important, non-urgent. So I said, you want me on non-important, urgent stuff? No, 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 you know. A couple weeks later, I said, okay, you want me in box four, right? Uh, so it was a good way to toy with him because he took it seriously at the time I did not. Um, so the chalkboard, the chalkboard will go on the wall. The photo, as Mary said, please sign on the, the side. The, the photo will go there with a plaque as well just to commemorate the day and what it means. And then the sign that was hanging as you came in that said the rap center, uh, Richard A. Peterson, that will be built and go at the garden. Um, so as you enter, it's obvious what this is with the art deco and all. So um, thank you all very much for coming. We have plenty of time. Please enjoy yourselves. And again, um, for those in IT who are going to help, um, you know, again, we can take small groups into the building um, and in and out of the data center floor. Um, so feel free to mingle through there uh, as you do. So thanks a lot for coming. Thank you.